The difference between an information source created for a general adult audience and one created for an audience of experts in the topic is really important. It's also important to know what role you're functioning in when you're looking for an information source. Are you a person going about your daily life? A professional who is expected to be an expert and an authority? Or a college student, which is a sort of subject expert in training? Here is an example of an information source that is meant for a general audience. It's part of a Reader's Digest article about weight loss tips. This tip suggests eating fat-releasing foods, including dark chocolate. The article doesn't provide any biological or medical explanations. This kind of information source is basically something that keeps you from getting bored in a waiting room, and in the process it makes you look at advertisements. Articles from information sources like Reader's Digest are called general interest and are written for adults who don't know too much about a topic and aren't actually interested in becoming experts. There will be background information and explanations designed to take you from knowing nothing to, to, to knowing a little bit. But these types of information sources are also distinguished by how they relate their information to everyday life and try to make it entertaining by using anecdotes, examples, and humor. The language is also more casual and conversational. The information is often incomplete and oversimplified. By contrast, something for an expert audience will be more focused on the subject matter and have a serious tone. I will talk more about information sources intended for expert audiences later. In the meantime, I'll read you an excerpt from this general audience's article. 1. Indulge in fat-releasing foods. They should help keep you from feeling deprived and binging on higher calorie foods. For instance, honey, just 64 fat-releasing calories in one tablespoon. Drizzle on fresh fruit. Notice the easy words and short sentences. Here's a different article from a different kind of general interest publication. It's from Discovery News, and it's an example of something that's meant to appeal to a general audience with a particular interest in that subject. It provides a lot more detail and uses somewhat more specialized language. It talks a little bit about the research methods. They mention that it wasn't a randomized trial, and they expect their audience to know that that means don't get too excited because the results of such a study can't be conclusive. But it doesn't have enough detail about the research methods or the exact findings, because that would still go over the audience's head. The audience is everyday people who are interested in science, not nutritionists, doctors, or biologists. So even though this is a more specialized, more sophisticated general interest information source, it still doesn't usually provide data or citations, because the audience is not interested in those things. You may find one citation to the original research article that this general audience article is based on. That is useful because then you can track down the source that you really want. While this article might help you stay informed, or might even get you interested in the topic and make you want to research it further, it's not a good information source for academic research. Let me read you an excerpt from this one. The presumption has always been that because chocolate is full of pesky calories and eaten as a sweet, that it would be associated with higher BMI, or body mass index, said Beatrice Golem, an internal medicine doctor who studies oxidative stress and other topics at the University of California, San Diego. Note that the language is more sophisticated, and the subject matter is also much more detailed. They explain that BMI means body mass index, but they also expect the audience to either know what that means or be willing to go and look it up. The article features an interview with an expert, where the expert's knowledge is made under understandable for non-experts. Here is the last example, which is from an article in a scholarly journal. Scholarly information sources are always meant for an audience of experts who already know the specialized vocabulary of the subject area and have at least an idea of how research is conducted in that subject area. The expected audience also has a firm understanding of the facts, theories, and other details that make it possible to understand new information in that subject area. So the language of a scholarly information source is full of advanced vocabulary and the content will go right into the complicated material without pausing to explain anything. No effort is made to make it entertaining. The audience is expected to be interested in the information itself and not need any further motivation to keep reading. This may or may not be true. Even experts have limits to their attention spans. But at least you will not have to worry about sorting out irrelevant stories or trying to decide if the author really meant something or was just being funny.
Occasionally a bit of dry humor may shine through, but it will be quite subtle. The research methods are described in detail, and so is the statistical analysis. There are charts and tables so that the reader has access to the actual data. There is a references section so that the reader can follow the author's own research and check their conclusions, maybe even draw different conclusions from the source material. This is why a scholarly information source is the kind of information source that you need for college-level research projects. And here's an excerpt from the scholarly article. Supervised chemometric analyses of the urine NMR and MS data revealed statistically significant time-dependent changes, as noted by the positive value of the model predictability par parameter Q2Y value. You can tell it is meant for an audience who already knows a lot about the subject area, because there is no explanation of what a chemometric analysis is or what it does. Data and statistics are presented with the expectation that the audience will be able to make some sense of them. The vocabulary is information dense and has nuances to pick apart, like statistically significant time-dependent changes. This kind of article can be a lot of work to read for a beginner, but it is worth it, even if you have to use reference books to understand the jargon and methods, because this is the original material, not interpreted or pared down in any way. But you will not need scholarly information sources every time you want to learn something. Whether you need an information source aimed at experts, or one aimed at a general audience, depends on what you're going to do with what you're trying to learn. When I need to fix my plumbing, I don't need a monograph about hydraulic engineering. But I also don't want an instruction manual with uninformative diagrams, or incorrect procedures, or something that doesn't actually cover what I need to do. I need something that's both relevant and intended for smart general audiences. I want it to be simple, but not dumbed down and definitely not inaccurate or misleading. The standards are even higher when I'm writing a research paper or similarly when I'm doing research in my field as a professional. Then I need the research methods, raw data, citations, details, and advanced concepts. Those kinds of things will only be found in information sources that were created for an expert audience.